right place at the right time to give God a great praise. Yeah. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Driving up the highway this morning, I heard James Cleveland say, all things are going to work out. Yeah. All things are going to work out. Yeah. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Yeah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. One more time for the Holy Spirit. Praise Hallelujah. the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. This is Palm Sunday and the beginning of Holy Week. Palm Sunday, the entrance into Jerusalem. Holy Wednesday, into the darkness. Monday, Thursday, the Last Supper. Good Friday, Jesus is agony on the cross. Holy Saturday, we are visiting the tomb of Jesus. We thank you that you have thought it not robbing to join us this first Sunday, the first Sunday communion experience and Palm Sunday. Thank you for those who are physically with us in the sanctuary and those worshiping with us via social media. We are the only African-American church located at 174 South Valley Road in the city of West Orange. Amen, amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Our scripture reference this morning is taken from the New Testament reading, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 30. And I'll be reading from the New International Version. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this. Whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. We, for, whatever, for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord is in an unworthy man and will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat, the, eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. That is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. This is the word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. John Newton penned it like this. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound, that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace has brought me safe this far, and grace will lead me home. Tom and Dorsey came along and said, Precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me on. Let me stand. I'm tired. I'm weak. I'm lonely. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord. Lead me on. And then Cleveland Derek stepped by. He stopped by and he said, Just a little talk with Jesus. I once was lost. And sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven filled my soul. Yeah. It bathed my heart in love and wrote my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. Yeah. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Yeah. Let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our fainters cry. He will answer by and by. Now when you feel a little prayer will turn it, and you know a little fire is burning, you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. I will worship the one who calmed the raging sea. I will worship the one who hushed the raging me. My hand, I lift to you. My voice, I lift to you. My heart, I lift to you. I will worship you. This is our call to worship. Let us remain standing and sing together the glory of God.
most holy and everlasting Father, we come boldly before your throne of grace. Merciful God, as we enter Holy Week, turn our hearts again to Jerusalem and to the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Stir up within us the gift of faith that we may not only praise him with our lips, but may follow him in the way of the cross. Father God, your word is true and you are faithful. You promise salvation through the Messiah. Today we remember that Jesus fulfilled the Old Testament prophecies of our promised Redeemer. We acknowledge our need for salvation from our sins and rejoice that Jesus is our deliverer. We celebrate him today as king and ask that his kingdom come in our lives too. We praise him now and will praise you throughout the coming days. Please let all of us praise the Lord together from the pulpit to the door. We ask God for travel mercy for those who may be on their way, because God is a good God, and we just want to say thank you. We seal this prayer in the mighty and majestic name of Jesus the Christ. May these words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. Lord, my rock and my redeemer, and all God's children who believe, say amen. 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 We will usher in the presence of the Lord with songs of Zion. Singing, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fortune, glory to God. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of the Spirit, watch it. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine.
in Psalm 145, verse 18, it reminds us, the Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. Our prayers should reflect the character of God and reveal the history in scripture, and most of all, in Jesus Christ. They should take into account God's will for us. Our morning prayer will be led by our trusty chair, the Ethel Ellis. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Thank you. 
started with us in our way. We thank God for our trustee chair. You can say anything about her or whatever you want, good, bad. But Lord knows that woman can pray. Amen. Just keep praying for me, trust each other. Pray like that. Lord have mercy. I guess that's why I'm being blessed. Amen. We thank God for that powerful prayer. We want you to keep God close to your heart in a season and a time such as this. There are still yet many who need our prayers, and we're blessed to see our mother black walk in here. She always trying to surprise somebody. Good to see her <laughs> this morning. We want to keep her in prayer for the needs in prayer. Uh, Deacon Platt, we want to keep him in prayer. Uh, we were wondering why he sounded different on our call, on our church call meeting, but um, he finally admitted that he had a cold. And so we were talking with him yesterday and checked on him and He's coming along, but you know, these days and these times, when you get any kind of virus, it can be a challenge. So please keep him in prayer. We want to keep Mother Black in prayer. We want to continue to keep our Umokoro family in prayer. We want to keep those who are yet challenged in this season, because even though it's yet three years away, there are many, when this season comes about, that are reflecting on loss um, because of the devastation of the COVID virus. And so, you know, many people would try to say, well, at this point, we should be over it. We're never going to be over it. It's always going to be with us. We find a way to pocket stuff. You mm. put it in a pocket, in a, in a place where God will give us strength. You know, only God has the capacity to forget. Only he can cast it in the sea of forgetfulness. Our humanness doesn't allow us to do that. So we want to pray for those in our church family and those who we know. Continue to keep them in prayer. Keep uh, my children in prayer, my adult children. Uh, we thank God um, that Marcus kept he and his girlfriend, Miriam Bella, safe. They were driving in Pennsylvania in that rainstorm yesterday. We were praying. Uh, we thank God um, that they are safe. They are well. My daughter, Parmen and Tremaine, um, Beals, and Gideon and Zion want to keep them in prayer also. Want to keep the greater cornerstone church family in prayer. You, when you dare to host worship as they have been doing, have been doing a wonderful, um, been, been a wonderful host for our Lenten season, the enemy has been attacking members of their congregation. Mm. One member who was there um, on Thursday, um, by Saturday, was challenged in ICU. And so we never know um, what the enemy is. As I was preaching, you know, the enemy is lurking, and Satan is lurking, and he wants to rob, to kill, and destroy. But we have to trust God for strength. Amen? Amen. Um, also, Pastor Wilson um, wants to send his thanks to all the churches for your compliance uh, with their mask mandate. He said he knows that it was uncomfortable and uncomfortable in worship. You know, we, we are shouting people, we want to holler and scream and cry out and have the mask on just to give us that. But uh, I don't think you may not have understood. He said people, everybody was uh, very kind and his, uh, to the request of his ushers, but they don't have any ventilation in their church. <clears throat> like uh, Not like us, they don't have any windows. So the reason for the mask mandate was so that if we could contain anything that anybody may have been carrying, um, um, he ended up catching a cold and after preaching, and I caught a cold, and they wouldn't caught a cold. So uh, we thank God that it was not, nothing like uh, the virus in that sense. But anytime you're in a room like that, you have to be uh, conscious and cautious. He wants us to pray for them. They're uh, probably going to lift their mandate maybe on Easter Sunday, uh, with hopes that um, they will be able to stay safe in the process. And, and we need to stay safe too. I told my dad, I said, you know, uh, there's a challenge today. You have to wear your mask, and if you don't wear your mask, just expect that you may pick up something. Yeah. And so we have to be conscious when we go. And I say to you all, 
When you go into the drugstore and you get in your prescription, sick people go into CVS and Walgreens. So if you don't wear your mask anywhere and you go into the prescription counter, put on your mask. They're wearing a mask serving you and you have no mask. You know, there's something wrong with that picture. So we still need to be diligent as best that we can. And if you feel comfortable without it, take care of your body. You know, put some good stuff in you, you know. Be like Minister Lashana, get that, you know, sea moss and all get that, that other stuff. stuff that you. These right. young people use. I don't know about that. You know, grandma, you know, she has some orange get juice. That cod liver oil in your system. Little cast of oil and, you know, and, and some of that one. other stuff. Yeah. You know, it wasn't Jesus juice, but it was strong. <laughs> Amen. So whatever you need to do to take care of your body, and make Amen. sure you do that. Amen. Amen. We are entering into Holy Week, and you should be excited. Uh, this week, we will not have Wednesday service, but we're going to have Thursday morning. Thursday service, and we'll be having communion. We'll be back. Greater Cornerstone, I can't wait for my group brother, uh, Reverend Dr. Stephen Webb. Amen, he said amen. he's just going to bring a tape to tape all the services and have benediction after that. <laughs> but I know he's going to come and bring a word, and I know our sister church, um, New Life, is going to bring it. Uh, amen, you know, amen. They're strong, but they're strong. Amen. So we want to be able to support them like they have supported us. Amen. Friday, we will be having Seven Last Saints. We'll be premiering our United Clergy Mass Choir. Many have come out. I'm so proud of our minister, Webb, who has put that together. And so we will have a choir on the seven last uh, words. Saturday, we're having baptism. Now, I'm encouraging those of you who are not baptized, or think you want to get baptized again, to join us. Um, and I have um, my deacon Harris take my um, baptismal equipment, knock cobwebs off, and I'll be utilizing it. Um, we do have one who is going to go down in the water again. And then any of you, if you are encouraged to do so, just let me know so I can let them know how many uh, we will be baptizing. Amen? Amen. And on Sunday morning, get ready, get ready, get Hallelujah. ready. We will have sunrise service again at Great Cornerstone. And then we will have our Resurrection Sunday service. I'm excited about Amen. it. Been talking to our younger people. Who, uh, we no longer have a you know, youth choir or anything of, of that nature, but we do have some young adults who have reached out and talked about, you know, singing. So we're going to have Sam, we're going to have some young people, and we're going to have church. Amen? Amen. 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 I'm just excited that there is a, the spirit, you know, just because we don't see our young people, we need to keep praying for them. Amen, somebody? Amen. 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 Especially as young adults in their 20s. We need to keep praying for them. This is a vulnerable time. You know, many of us, you know, in our 20s, we were uh, walked away from the church for a minute until God lit us up out there in the world. We came running back to the church. So we want to pray for them. And any time they want to come and they want to do something, all they got to do is talk to the pastor and we want to make it happen. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's giving time. We thank God for the spirit of giving. I thank God he's allowed us to give. We want you to give God your best to do what you can. Oh, I don't want to just forget. Thank you, Nia Fellowship Baptist Church, for Thursday, for Wednesday night. We had a time in the Lord talking about the betrayal. Way back. If you left out of there and you didn't feel convicted, Shame on you, because I was convicted myself. <laughs> Talking about betrayal, the betrayed and the betrayer, and no God more. has the capacity to do to deliver us. And we received so many accolades at our um, um, clergy meeting on yesterday about our presentation and who we are. And uh, they, they talked about us as a church. I told you they think we are a big mega church and that we are who we are. We thank God that we go to worship, not in any form or fashion, any outside show. Amen? Amen. As I shared with you on the call meeting, they told me, uh, you, know, you can't say that bad about your church. So some people say, you talk about it? Yeah, I talk about y'all. <laughs> Just like I talk about my kids. Because y'all talk about me, y'all lying. That I, y'all can perpetrate if you want. But they know that I love my church and I love 
uh, the spirit on which we go to worship. They can see it in you. And Pastor Wilson, Pastor Webb, and I challenged the other preachers. We told them the living season is part of our season, our worship. Yeah. And we do it because it's become accustomed to us and we rearrange um, what we do because of it with our Bible study and things of that nature. You know, some preachers just thought they still had to do what they did. We said, no, this is the season for God. And, and we have come together as churches and fellowship um, together. And that's why we were able to be there on Wednesday, giving God our best. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, thank um, our first lady, Dr. Gwen, who got up there to sing hallelujah. If she don't say that now, she can yell hallelujah. Saying to me at home, when she gets sick and tired of me, Hallelujah! <laughs> so we give God your best. Amen. Get ready to give God your best, and I'm telling you, you will be blessed. Now, what God tells us, He said, "Try me and see." We try to slot machines and we try to pick it. Let's try God and see. See if you can hit the big one. Just give Him a portion back to Him and watch Him just. Bless you mightily. Amen. Amen. It's, a, it's a dollar in a dream, ten dollars in a dream, hundred dollars in a dream. If you give a thousand dollars, whatever you want to do. But trust me, if you give to God, He will give back to you. And I'm not just talking about money. He'll wake you up the next morning. He'll start you in your way. He'll give you strength. He'll have it in the end of what you can handle. That's why we worship Him. Amen. Amen. And so in the spirit of giving. We just come to thank the Lord. Stand to your feet as we thank God and praise the Lord. Just want to thank
pray that you would bless those who died, desired to give, but did not have to give. God, cover them and let them know it's in the spirit of wanting to give that you will open up the doors and bless them mightily. But God, let them also know that as they give, you will pour out blessings from the windows of heaven. And we don't have room enough to receive. Allow us to bask in your glory for our giving, but just allow us to be thankful that we were able to give. In match this name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. And the people of God say,
made it the wrong way. Come on. Whatever has to be done. That's why y'all can't pay me because y'all would be broke. <laughs> Thank God for Jesus. I'm looking over there and I listen. Listen, Reverend Hendrix, she got her own little praise on. She didn't call me on like this. She, you know, she got her little step going on. I was getting excited watching her praise the Lord. Amen. Her Palm Sunday, yellow morning, and she ready. Amen. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. chapter and the book of Romans the 8th chapter book of Luke the 19th chapter and the book of Romans the 8th chapter if you can't find it in your Bible pull out your phone and just put in Luke 19 37 to 40 Luke 19 37 to 40 and the word of the Lord reads and when he has come nigh he was come nigh even now at the descent Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said to him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, Stones will immediately cry out. In Romans, the 8th chapter, 38th verse. Romans, the 8th chapter, 38th verse. The word of the Lord reads, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, no, any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And the word of the Lord is blessed. I come to preach to you from this subject. Don't look back. Just keep praising God. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. Don't look back. Just keep praising God. Let us pray. Turn to God, our Father, we thank you for your mercy and your grace. Oh God, I pray that you would stand up and sit me down. Hide behind, hide me behind the cross. Allow the people to see and hear you and not me. Let this word manifest in their hearts and in their lives. And hopefully they will be able to hold on to it for times of strength. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Today is Palm Sunday. Christian churches everywhere will be decorated with palm branches. Many churchgoers will be crafting their own palms. Remember, we used to have to make up the own palm and try to make the cross and they come up crooked and all of that. Well, I think we got them already made out for you. Some of us have joined many others this Lent season, especially those of us going through our Lent season services and heard sermons on the plot, the view, the entry, the cleansing, the anointing, the betrayal. And now today, this is Palm Sunday, the final Sunday of Lent season, signifying the beginning of Holy Week. For those of you who have joined us in worship in person and online, if you're not aware, Holy Week is the week leading up to Easter, which we identify as Resurrection Sunday. Yeah. It is held in remembrance of Jesus, time, his time in Jerusalem before he died and was resurrected. Palm Sunday commemorates Jesus' entrance, 
As he entered into Jerusalem, as he rode into the city on a donkey, his followers spread palm branches at his feet, called him Hosanna, the Savior. Palm branches were considered to be symbols of victory and triumph. So when you think about your palm, think of it as a symbol of victory and triumph. And ironically, as they had this symbol, laying their palms of victory and triumph, the same people talk about betrayal. The same people of Jerusalem would be the same people who would turn on Jesus and demand the city to crucify him. Yeah, yeah. That, that's why you got to watch you know, who give you accolades and, and different things, even as a basketball coach and a bowling coach and a track coach. Or, you know, we would look at the paper and see what the press was saying. But trust me, the same press that built you up, the same press that will bring you down. And we, we see that right now with Dawn Staley and South Carolina, the same press that was building her up. Same press to bring them down, but I'm so glad. Dawn knows something about the Lord. These people didn't realize that Jesus would actually be the savior of his people and that he was completing the mission assigned to him by God. They were like Judas. They were following Jesus, but they had no relationship with him. They did not know that Jesus' sacrifice of his life would save all of us from our sins conquering death and doing so. Palms you receive today will have been blessed. Yeah. So they will be considered a holy ornament. So don't just take them and throw them away. Hold on to them as your symbol of strength and hope. Yeah. Hold on to them as long as you can. I got some from two, three years ago. So hold on and put them in your house. You know, we used to put them in the car, whatever we need to do. They should be your symbol of hope and a symbol of of your praise and your love for God. Yeah, yeah. Lord led me to two texts to share with you so that you can understand why you should not look back but should look forward towards your destiny and praise God in advance for your blessings to come. You should not look back because of three things and I'll be done. Looking back shackles you in your past. Yeah. You continue to look back. You can't move forward. In fact, you stumble and you trip. It shackles you in your past. Number two, praise releases you in your present. Your praise will release you in your present and what you're going through. And finally, number three, praise moves you into worship. So worship draws you closer to God. Now, get this, don't get this messed up. Praise is a lot of noise and praise is reaching out and crying out. But we praise God so we can enter into worship. Yeah, yeah. Once you enter into worship and you feel the presence of God, there's nothing nobody can say or do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looking back shackles you when you do not humble yourself with honesty about who you are. These people were excited to see Jesus because they believed he was the king they had been waiting for to come. They were looking for a political king to reign. They didn't realize that Jesus was coming as a spiritual king to save the world. Yeah. If Jesus looked back, uh, if save the world, if Jesus had looked back and got caught up in the accolade to the people, he would have been shackled with the expectations of political success. Oh, so even Jesus had to look forward. He knew what his agenda was. And instead of riding a white stallion, huh. he rode a colt, donkey. He rode this colt because he understood the prophetic word that came from the Old Testament. Zechariah 9 and 9 says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt. The foal of a donkey. Yeah. Yeah. If we follow the example of Jesus, we will realize that sometimes we have to humble ourselves and not act like we are so prosperous in the midst of people who are and aren't prosperous and walk in humbleness of our own testimonies. Yeah. We would also spend time in Bible study, in our own private study from time to time and learn that when we walk in our Testimony, we become less quick to judge, we become less quick to criticize, 
or laugh at people about the state that they are living in as sin reigns in their lives, we will be able to pull up a mirror and see ourselves. If the truth be told, we are only where we are in God and living in our experience only because God gave us grace. We're here because of the grace of God. And if it had not been for the grace of God, none of us would be as blessed as we are right now. And you might even think that you're not blessed, but just look around. There's somebody, even if you think you're doing bad, that's doing worse off than you. In fact, the reality, we could never even imagine where we would be right now. Some of our blessings have come so quick and we have missed the fact so much we don't even realize how blessed we are. Right. Oh, you don't realize that it was raining yesterday and there was a whole lot going on, but there were some tornadoes yeah. around the way. And then if you watch the news and you see the trees that fell and the houses that was torn up and people who had to huddle together in a bathtub. I don't think anybody here had to go through that. So you should have walked through the door praising God. That when you came out in the huddle, huh. yeah. Come on. your house would have been gone. Yeah, right. But God spared your life. You. Talk about South Carolina women's basketball coach. You know, wife and I are avid basketball fans, especially women's basketball. And, and, and South Carolina women's basketball coach, Dawn Steady, could have never imagined that she would become the great player that she was and the great coach yeah. she is. Yeah. But she had faith in God. Now, her team was undefeated. Everybody was expecting the accolades of them going undefeated and changing the, 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 the face of the game and, and eventually beating out UConn, but that, that wasn't God's plan. They were undefeated, and they lost in the final four. And this is how she responded on her faith. She said, I don't give honor to God when we win. I want to win all I don't just give honor to God just when we win. She said, I want to win all our games. She said, he's the reason for all seasons. I take the good with the bad. And she said, I'm a sore loser, but I'm a gracious loser. I'm going to give credit where credit is due. And she went on and said, Iowa had a terrific game plan and we didn't get it done. It wasn't in the cards. I'm never going to turn my back on the game of basketball. I'm still favored. Come on. And I know that upset some people in the media because they were trying to say that her team was a brawling team. They were bar brawlers and they were big brawn girls and all they did was fight. And she knew she was teaching them how to be young ladies and how to do it the right way. She praised God in her most difficult moment with the world watching her. And for that, God released her from the shackles of the pain of her loss. Huh. Oh, some people would still have their head in their hands and some people would still be devastated. But come, uh, let, let me tell somebody, when you can praise God when you're in pain, there's a blessing that is coming your way beyond your greatest imagination. God releases us from the shackles because of our praise. Your praise is like water vapor. That is why we have come to the understanding that when praises go up, blessings come down. Water vapor rises in the atmosphere and then it cools down and forms tiny water droplets through something called condensation. These then turn into something called clouds. I'm talking to somebody. When they all combine together, they grow bigger and are too heavy to stay up in the air. I'm talking to somebody. This is what your praise does. It gets too heavy to stay in the air. And when you praise God, it does the same thing. Your praise rises in the atmosphere and it turns into something called worship. God turns your praise into worship, into a cloud. And when it gets too heavy, God begins to say, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you. I got a check for you. I got a blessing for you. I got some healing for you. I got a deliverance for you. Because you praise him. And, and it's like putting money in the bank. You can't draw nothing out if you don't put nothing in. David knew this. And that's why he said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast unto the Lord. And the humble shall hear thereof. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, David said. And you know what he had been through. He said, let us exalt his name together. If we exalt his name together, we can change something in this city. If we exalt his name together, 
We can change something in the church. If we exalt his name together, we can change the pain in our own families and what we're going through. But we've got to give God the praise. Stop sitting there and being mad about what you're going through. And throw up your hands and say, God, I thank you anyhow. Praise draws you closer to God. Praise and worship draws you closer to God because praise is defined as an expression of approval, commendation, and admiration. Praise is the antecedent, antecedent that washes your sin away. Praise is the invitation of God's arrival. Praise is the connection of communion between your prayer life and your standard with God. Worship is a declaration that God is in the midst of all that is happening in our world today. A powerful weapon against any lie that says God is not in control or that he is not able. But some of you didn't think anything would happen to Donald Trump and all that he had done. But I'm telling you, your praise has done something because God is not marked. And I don't care what the result is. God is saying, I'm still in control. Worshiping together teaches us to submit and surrender all of our cares to God, our priorities, our plans, our hopes, our dreams, and even our fears. When is the last time you went to God about the fear that you have in your life? Paul tells us in Romans 8, 38, he said that we face all day long in verses 36 before 38 he goes down he said we face death all day long he says we are like sheep on their way to be butchered he says in everything we have won more than a victory because of Christ who loves us Paul reminds us that he is sure that nothing he said nothing should separate us from the love of God and I come to tell you don't you let your pain keep you from giving God praise don't you let your grief keep you from giving God praise. The devil just don't want you to hear. He don't want you to hear the voice of God, so he wants you to stay quiet. You've got to get up and say, God, I love you anyhow. God, I praise you anyhow. Nothing in all creation can separate us from God's love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Our praise to God confirms the love that we have for God. Anybody love God today? That's why when the Pharisees uh, among the multitudes said to Jesus, Master, rebuke your disciples, he answered and said to them, If I rebuke them, uh, these rocks are going to cry out. Uh, you don't want these rocks to cry out. Uh, they can't hold back. Uh, the rocks are crying out for us in our situation uh, because of turmoil in our families. Uh, the rocks are crying out because of the violence in our community. Uh, the rocks are crying out because kids are being when they go to school. The rocks have been uh, uh, crying out because of the hate and the evil that still exists in this country. The devil is a liar. I'm going to praise God so that my grandchildren are covered. I'm going to praise God so that my family is covered. But I tell you, uh, I tell you, uh, say to your neighbor, don't look back. The devil is trying to separate you from the love of God. The enemy doesn't want us to see the blessings in Jesus. The enemy doesn't want us to see Jesus riding on the top of our burdens. The enemy doesn't want us to see Jesus riding on the top of our hope. The enemy doesn't want us to see Jesus riding on top of our joy. The enemy doesn't want us to see Jesus riding on top of our peace. Don't look back. You got your palm today. You better put your palm in the air and wave it like you just don't care. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, in spite of my issues. Lord, I love you. Thank you, Jesus, in spite of my pain. Lord, I love you. Thank you, Jesus, in spite of my disappointments. Lord, I love you. Excuse me if I cry, but thank you, Jesus, in the spite of my grief. I still love you, Lord. Don't look back. Alan Darling used to write a song that Clark and I used to play. This is as I won't go back. God been too good to me. And Jesus has set me free. No, no, no. I won't go back. Praise God in good times. Don't look back. Praise God in bad times. Don't look back. Praise God when you are sin challenged. And don't look back. Praise God when sin 
sin is defeated in your life. But praise Him uh, like you know you're going to be blessed. Uh, don't look back. Uh, do like Paul did. Uh, Paul said, I stretch toward uh, the mark uh, of the high calling uh, in Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus
with everything and every fiber of my being. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Eternal God, we thank you that you came and you rode with integrity. We thank you that you displayed to us your humbleness because you could have come with all of the bells and whistles, all of the expensive armor, but God, we know you came to show us the spiritual king that you would be. And so God, we don't want to be the people who would wave the palms and then ask who you are. Wave the palms and shout victory and then say, who was that? We want to be the people who wave these palms and take them home and use them as a symbol of hope, symbol of peace, and a symbol of love. Because you sacrifice your life for us. Bless these palms as we prepare to give them out today. As we commune and hand out these palms, let us.
claim the victory over everything that is trying to challenge us in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you would, ask that you would turn to the church covenant. If you have your phones, it would be on the email that was sent at the end of our worship guide. I'm not sure if they're still in our seats. If they are, you can pull them out. If not, you can join us as we repeat. Church covenant. Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we do now in the presence of God, angels in this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit, to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge and holiness, to give it a place in our affections, prayers, and services above every organization of human origin, to sustain its worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrine, to contribute cheerfully and regularly as God has prospered us towards its expenses, for the support of a faithful and evangelical ministry among us, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel throughout the world. In case of difference of opinion of the church, we will strive to avoid a contentious spirit. And if we cannot unanimously agree, we will cheerfully recognize the right of the majority to govern. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion to study diligently the Word of God, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintance, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be kind and just to those in our employ, and faithful in the service we promise others, endeavoring in the purity of heart and goodwill towards all men to exemplify and commit our holy faith. We further engage to watch over, to pray for, to exhort and stir up each other unto every good word and work, to guard each other's reputation, not needlessly exposing the infirmities of others, to participate in each other's joys, and with tender sympathy bear one another's burdens and sorrows, to cultivate Christian courtesy, to be slow to give or take offense, but always ready for reconciliation, being mindful of the rules of our Savior in the 18th chapter of Matthew, to secure it without delay and through life amid evil report and good report, to seek to live to the glory of God, who have called us out of darkness into this marvelous light. When we remove from this place, we engage as soon as possible to unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principle of God's word. I challenge you to take this covenant, make it a part of your life. I challenge you, not just with church folk, with work folk, with friends, with enemies. Read through this covenant. It speaks to all of that. And the more you embrace this and you take communion, examine yourself and take communion, you will see the blessings of the Lord. I said on the other night, Paul said, many are sick among us because we eat and we drink unworthily. There's no sense of you eating and you drinking, acting like you are really obedient to God. All of us need to examine ourselves, have a spirit of repentance before we have communion. Yeah, yeah. And when we do that, that's when we get more power yeah. in our praise. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. So we invite our deacons to come now and prepare the table for communion.
extra you're welcome to. We don't just want to hold on to them. But as you leave, please come and take a couple more for family members if there's a need. Make sure you open the side of your wafer first. Yes, sir. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Don't look back. Amen. Keep praising God. Amen. Amen. 